Jim here, how's it going? Today I have a first for me. We have an online diagnosis of someone's trim, like an online scuba trim workshop. If you wanna follow along and see how we're diagnosing Adam's trim issues, let's have a look at the videotape. So first I've got a picture here of Adam and as you can see, uh, he's in, in, right now he's in, in good trim position. Uh, let's go over his stats. So he's wearing a seven millimeter Farmer John in fresh water. So that means over his chest, he's got 14 millimeters of neoprene, which is quite a lot. Um, let me see, he's uh, wearing a 22 pound weight belt, all right? And just some stats here, have a look. So this Aqualung BC, as you can see, uh, there are integrated pockets. He can pull out some weight pockets here. And up here on the tank, there are also two uh, trim pockets, trim weight pockets. I'm not clear uh, how much, if that's one or two kilo capacity, I'm not sure. You can see he has aluminum tank, uh, some sort of light fins. Uh, I'm sure those aren't uh, heavy light jet fins and everything else looks pretty average. Okay, Adam has about 25 dives. He's an advanced open water diver. Uh, this diving, uh, as a lot of his diving, is in the Northeast Dutch Springs in Pennsylvania. Um, a, a quarry dive, a freshwater quarry dive. And let's see, so this is his typical rental gear. So it sounds like he, he's renting. Um, and for this video, he was using a weight belt. Uh, let me see. He says that he's having some trouble with his trim and with his frog kick. Let's listen what's going on. Um, so he, he, he feels like he often loses trim in his feet getting heavy, his feet going down. Um, and then he's forced to start kicking to regain his trim. Uh, the kicking sends him up because his, his legs are down. That makes sense. So it's going to send him a net up. Um, and his constant kicking means he goes through air faster. Okay, now what he also told me, he told me that when he ascends, when he gets in the shallows, his feet get very floaty. So let's let's have a look at, I have some input on that. Let's have a look. All right, so here's the video. This was Adam's wife taking this video on a GoPro. We'll see, he comes in here, arms out, a uh, reasonable frog kick. He's looking okay right here. That Yeah, the trim is reasonable. Okay, and he, and he ends it. Uh, so let's have a look here. Back back to this picture. So, um, first of all, we, we had an online chat. And as I explained to Adam, so his, his buoyant trim, so it breaks down into three parts. So the first part is what I would call the equipment and the static uh, tr natural trim is a, a function of the things that don't change. You can set it up and it doesn't change so much. That'd be your equipment, your fins, your exposure protection, that sort of thing. Then there's the equipment that changes and that would be the tank because the buoyancy, the trim of that tank is going to change over the course of a dive, especially an aluminum tank like Adam is using here. And then the third part of, of trim is you, right? Because you can do stuff with your legs, you can do stuff with your arms, um, and so you, you can affect your body English uh, quite a bit. So those are the three aspects of trim. So let's have a look how he's doing here. First thing I'm going to observe, I, I don't see it here. Actually, this, he looks quite reasonable here. So I don't know, you know, he mentioned uh, that this was at maybe mid dive or a little bit after mid dive. So as, as you folks know, probably an aluminum tank as a dive goes on, the rear of the aluminum tank is going to get lighter as the dive goes on. And an aluminum tank is one of the only tanks that will float when it's empty or near empty, right? It'll float bottom up, uh, which is why aluminum tanks for me are a really poor choice with dry suit because I have a foot light tendency sometimes with the dry suit. And if I have an aluminum tank, it makes that all the worse. So aluminum tank is not a great choice for me for dry suit. Okay, um, now let's talk about his his static uh, his static trim here. Now the tank looks for me in a reasonable position, right? So uh, I like to have mine as I as I've told you in, in different videos. I like to have mine pretty up high um, because I ha have generally 
when in a wetsuit, I have a, a foot heavy situation generally. So I want to favor myself for uh, having my, my head heavy. So I would have the tank up as, as high as I can tolerate it with my head. It looks reasonable here. Um, maybe he could go a little bit higher. I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, I've talked to him about that today. Um, his arms are out, which is a perfect position. Now, his, his probably the biggest thing he can uh, make a change to here is his, uh, his weight positioning. So he's wearing a weight belt here. So, right, that's gonna be on his waist and uh, below his, possibly just below his center of gravity. He's pulling his feet down, probably. And he's not using the trim pockets here. Now, the trim pockets aren't so high, but at least they are um, mid, right? So my, my, my recommendation to him today was I would experiment with those trim pockets, you know, put a couple kilos in them, one kilo in each. If they'll fit two, get back in the water the next time, try it with two, see how you do, right? See how that goes for you. So I think that uh, his, his weight placement is gonna help a lot with his, with his static trim, um, probably, uh, what he mentioned about when he gets shallow that his feet uh, float. I'm sure that's because this wetsuit is going to expand a lot once he gets near safety stop depth and probably his fins are light and and toward the end of the dive that back of the tank, the aluminum tank, is going to be floaty uh, and the legs, the whole thing is going to be expanding but you know legs are longer than other parts so probably that's pulling up. So that that's pretty difficult situation. I contrasted that to help with some explanation here. I had a video of me in the pool here. Um, now some quick notes. This is a, uh, a pool. I think uh, the bottom here is about three and a half meters, maybe 3.7 meters. So it's less than safety stop depth, uh, which means it's kind of tough, right? You, you, you get a lot of movement in the water. Uh, I'm wearing a shorty. I'm wearing a back plate that is steel. So that would be about three kilograms. And I have, let me see, I have heavy fins on the back there. Uh, those are negative fins. It's a very, very short tank. It's a 10 liter steel. I, I kind of hate these. Although with a shorty, uh, this is kind of a good choice because, because I don't have neoprene on my legs here and because I have heavy fins, this is gonna be a very leg heavy situation. So I have the back plate and the short tank pushed up high, it's gonna give me a bit of, of head down to kind of balance things out here. Now, the thing, oh, other notes. Uh, yes, there, there's a bad O-ring in this tank. Almost all these tanks, these are rental tanks, they have bad O-rings. I don't like to use my, my O-rings for the dive center because uh, I'm always donating, I'm changing their O-ring, so I didn't change it. And also, my tank straps here, my, my Velcro is going bad, so yeah, I, it doesn't look very pretty. Anyway, let's have a look. Now the first thing that I want that I, that I wanted Adam to notice today is the first aspect of my buoyancy, right? The static, what I'll call the static equipment buoyancy, like how my body and equipment are set up to favor me to make my trim as easy as possible, my my static trim. So let's have a look here. Um, you know, as you can see, I don't have to put a lot of effort effort <laughs> into you know, have my thing. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm demonstrating here how if you put your legs straight, it's going to pull your legs down, right? So that, that's what I'm demonstrating here for Adam. So I, I pull my legs in and you can see my head is slightly down. Now I put them out straight and my body is falling foot heavy. That was just kind of a demonstration of that. Um, and I'm going to do that a couple times here. Now I'm going to put my arms out and that's going to pull my head down somewhat, right? Now the, the effect isn't as strong as with legs, but uh, if I pull my arms in and I put my legs out, my head is going to come up, right? Now I think I'm going to go with the arms out again to illustrate how to get that head down attitude and pulling my legs way in. And that's what I've got, right? Okay, so what I was illustrating to Adam was what I recommend to him uh, might even help, because that's a rental situation, might even help to get a back inflate BC on his next rental, if that's an option. So set up your equipment and your weights, the position of your weights and your equipment, so that it's favoring your trim, making it as bulletproof as possible. 
okay so that might also be your tank choice so here in japan uh some dive sites i can have up to four tank choices right so some places will have aluminum 80s uh which i like for uh i like for wetsuit use especially very light wetsuits um there are steel 10 liters which this is a very short tank makes me head heavy so if i'm foot heavy this is kind of a good choice then there's a 12 liter steel which is a very neutral tank for me i, I like that for all situations and then there's a 14 liter steel which is quite a long tank i love that for dry suit because as i told you before my feet sometimes have a tendency to be a little bit light and dry suit and so that nice long steel tank keeps my tail down uh, quite effectively so i like that so my advice to adam was get your equipment set your static your placement your tank choice uh, your exposure protection all that stuff that's not going to change so much make that favor a good trim position in the water for you and then over the course of the dive understand that that's slightly going to change as you breathe your five or six pounds of air whatever that is now then the other thing the last thing is work your arms and your uh your legs in and out as needed right and that might be with the tank as the tank is used so for example if during a dive an aluminum 80 becomes light in the tail maybe he's going to have to put his legs out a little bit farther to make the tail go down or the same thing maybe he'll uh adjust his arms or maybe he'll have to do both uh, but hopefully if once he gets his static set nice and favorable he won't have to do so much body english in the future all right okay i'm gonna put this in there uh I, you know this is just a little bit of eye candy here so let me have a look i'm just uh i'm just chilling and now i'm gonna do some back kicking i'll leave it in here i might cut this out right some back kicking so i was i was showing adam some other finning that, that he can work on so this is this is back finning you could find lots of videos about how to do this you know i highly recommend uh you know when you're working on your trim and, and so what i recommended to him was you know spend a lot of time in a very small space maybe photo photographing or doing something where you know i'm talking hours like you know i spent probably several hours a day over a weekend uh the day that i really decided to get my trim set and i just spent a bunch of very boring hours you know working my weight and getting in and getting my english you know getting my position um and repeat right and then you know i lose my buoyancy and I, okay keep my mind in it keep positive reset myself and try to hang with it as long as possible like not moving a muscle that's the goal, right? You want to get in a position where all you're doing, the only movement is you're breathing up and down and your body English is there, right? And you're maybe just adjusting yourself, hopefully not finning as much and then see how long you can hold that position without finning, all right? All right, so here I am uh, back kicking and I think next what I'm gonna do is a helicopter turn. The simplest helicopter turn is a one-sided frog kick. That's the simplest helicopter turn. And then the advanced helicopter turn is this foot, you're doing a back kick. And this one, you're doing a, uh, a regular kick. So you're, you're kind of turning yourself around with the two feet. So uh, a frog kick with one and then a back kick with the other. So it's kind of, it's kind of moving you in that, in that direction, All right? Okay. To recap, my advice for Adam was to spend a lot of time in the water with, uh, with one goal. Your first goal is to set up your static, your static trim as bulletproof as possible. So that's gonna be choosing the right equipment. So maybe going to a back inflate BC is gonna be the thing for him. Uh, he's gonna to wanna to make sure that his tank placement and his choice of tank, because I think he said that he possibly has a choice with a 10 liter steel tanks or maybe 12 liter i'm not sure he might have a steel tank choice try it out see how it works for you um, also sliding it up or down is gonna use those trim pockets you know put put different amounts in there see how it's working for you move the weight around he also might want to see about taking off some weight we talked about that like at the end of the dive doing a weight check with 
just 500 psi or 50 bar at five meters and start dumping weights on the bottom with his partner there and see maybe he can dump some of that weight as well which would also help with the trim issue uh what else on his frog kick what i mentioned was uh, you're going to really have to visualize getting your fins to to hit afterwards right in reality most people's frog kick is probably more of a cupping but uh frog kicking uh, just takes a lot of practice right and there are different kinds of frog kicks sometimes i do from the ankles only sometimes i'm doing from the knees sometimes from the hips it depends uh, what i'm doing but uh, that issue we'll deal with later. So I wish the best luck to Adam. Adam's going to touch base with me after doing a little bit of training with he and his wife. And if anybody else wants to do something like this, you know, send in an issue that you have and you want input on. It's kind of fun, actually. Um, and uh, Adam is, is one of our new um, Patreon members. If anybody would like to support the channel and have a more direct contact, maybe have a, have a, a video chat uh, once a month or so, I encourage you to have a look at that link below. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I will see you at the beach next time.